A candy-colored clown they call the Sandman Tiptoes to my room every night Hi and welcome back to the channel. I put a poll up on the community tab saying should I review the James Bond movie or should I do a retrospective on the career of Dean Stockwell who died this week at the age of 85. The poll was overwhelmingly in favour of me looking at the career of Dean Stockwell. Based on the poll I've decided to look into the career of Dean Stockwell because am I not a river to my people? Because I am a river to my people. <laughs> Dean Stocker was born in 1936. His father Harry was an actor and a lyric baritone and his mother Betty was a dancer in burlesque. So both of his parents were in the industry. His brother Guy was also an actor. He did a whole bunch of episodes of a TV series I used to watch when I was a very small child called Adventures in Paradise. He was also in a remake of Beau Geste and he was in one of my favourite golfing movies and there is actually one favourite golfing movie I have. The 1967 Robert Wagner joint Bang. So Guy actually looked more of a movie star than Dean did, but it was Dean who had the long career. I found out something interesting about Harry Stockwell as well. In the original Snow White, he was the voice of Prince Charming. Anyway, moving right along, Dean Stockwell started out in movies in the 1940s. He was Catherine Grayson's nephew in Anchors Away, starring Frank Sinatra and Gene Kelly. He was also Nick and Nora Charles' child in Song of the Thin Man in 1947. But in later years, Dean Stockwell kind of reappraised his career as a child actor. And he said, It's a miserable way to bring up a child, though neither my parents nor I recognised it at the time. Now, the movie I first saw Dean Stockwell in was actually one of his childhood movies from the 1940s. Directed by Joseph Losey, it's a movie called The Boy with Green Hair which is an anti-war allegory which I saw on black and white TV so I didn't actually see the green hair. Now I want to revisit that one because it's got some interesting things to say about people who are different and the impact that World War II had on children. Even though I lost $420,000 for RKO at the time, I think it might be an interesting film to put into a future video because it really does have some things to say which are still very, very relevant and very important. Now that transition from child actor to adult actor is difficult and in some cases an impossible one for young actors to bridge. But Dean Stockwell managed it. In 1957 he did a play on Broadway called Compulsion, which is a slightly fictionalised version of the Leopold and Loeb murders in the 1930s, I think it was 1920s, 1930s. And in 1959 he actually starred in it along with Orson Welles and Bradford Dillman. He reprised his role from that. And I have a kitten clawing my leg. Compulsion is one of those movies I really like. I've got a copy of it over there somewhere. And even though it is very much a wordy piece of work and we get Orson Welles in full flight as a Clarence Darrow kind of lawyer, I like it. I like the speeches in it. I like the way it conveys the complexity of the two murderers. So if you haven't seen Compulsion, you should really check that one out. Dean Stockwell's really good in it. In fact, nobody is not really good in that movie. So Dean Stockwell started getting some credit as an adult actor, which was really good. He was in a version of Eugene O'Neill's Long Day's Journey Into Night. But then he dropped out. In the mid-60s, he dropped out and became a Topanga Canyon hippie, along with Russ Tamblin, also another young child actor, and Neil Young. Dean Stockwell had a few other arrows in his quiver. He was very much a graphic designer and an artist. He designed the album cover for Neil Young's album, American Stars and Bars, for instance. And later on, he made mosaic sculptures out of dice. In the late 1960s, his career came back again with things like Psych Out, he did with Susan Strasberg for Corman. And the movie I saw the other day in memoriam for Dean Stockwell, the crazy AIP joint directed by Daniel Haller the Dunwich Horror, based on the story by H.P. Lovecraft. Now, that movie is a lot of fun. Dean Stockwell plays Wilbur Waitley, a freaky guy who is fascinated with the copy of the Necronomicon that Arkham University has. Now, the professor in charge of things there is played by Ed Bigley Sr. in his last movie role. And he's just kind of walking around the campus, casually carrying a copy of the Necronomicon under his arm. 
He then asks one of his students, played by an incredibly miscast Sandra D, to take it back to the library and put it back in the case for him. Now, Wilbur, played creepily by Dean Stockwell, asks to take a look at it because he wants to read some of the spells in it. But they say no, and he has a bit of an argument with them. Sandra D's character, Nancy, then decides to drive Wilbur back to his house in the city of Dunwich, which is about 40 miles away from town. And it's late when they get there, so she decides to stay overnight. Now, Wilbur never stops being creepy in this. And there's this thing that uh, Dean Stockwell does with his eyes, which you see reflections of in his later role as Ben in Blue Velvet, where he lip syncs. Roy Orbison's in Dreams. He's got the same kind of creepy vibe about him in that. I think Dean Stockwell had a style of eye acting for playing creepy roles that worked really well. And of course, this being the kind of horror movie it is, there's someone locked in one of the upstairs rooms of the house, and there's a creepy grandfather played by Sam Jaffe. Now, the secret is, and I'm going to do a spoiler on this, it's, the movie was made in 1970, so spoilers aren't really relevant it's Wilbur's half-brother who was locked in the top room of the house what Nancy doesn't know is that he is the son of his mother and of the ancient god Yog sothoth who's one of Cthulhu's besties and so his brother looks a lot like the father than Wilbur does and we see the brother in right at the end of the movie. When Wilbur is trying to sacrifice Sandra D to Yog sothoth he has her on a sacrificial stone at an outdoor temple. He's got the copy of the Necronomicon braced between her legs so he can read it. And we get a lot of psychedelic special effects as Wilbur tries to summon the Elder Gods. But the townspeople and the professor save the day. And we get a glimpse of the half-brother who basically looks like that wandering eye thing from Big Trouble in Little China if it wore Medusa's hair as a wig. So that movie is crazy and Dean Stockwell's incessant creepiness in it makes it a lot of fun. And it's one of my favourite Dean Stockwell movies where he carries the movie and he's kind of got a, a slightly stoned creepiness about him. Sandra D is incredibly miscast. The character has hallucinations about hippie orgies. And her reactions in those montages of the orgies is hilariously bad. Now, she was a troubled person. She was married to Bobby Darrow for a while. And she had trouble with anorexia and other mental health issues. And so this wasn't the best part of her life. But anyway... Dean Stockwell is great in that. He went on to do a lot of other good things. Let me just go through the list here. He was in Paris, Texas. He played Wellington Ue in David Lynch's Dune. Of course, that then led on to Blue Velvet, where he played Ben. Uh, one of the cre second, probably, would he be the second creepiest character in Blue Velvet after Frank Booth? Probably. Him and Dennis Hopper had a long career together. He was in Dennis Hopper's really difficult movie the last movie which was shot in south america in about 1971 so he was in that he also played howard hughes i didn't know this till i did some research he played howard hughes in francis ford coppola's tucker a man in his dream i'm gonna to have to re-watch that one as well just to see how well dean stockwell played howard hughes he was in Robert Altman's The Player as well. He was in any number of things. And he was one of those actors who didn't mind hopping from television to movies as well. Everybody knows that he played Al Calavici in Quantum Leap. And unfortunately, when you read the headlines of his dying, that's the thing they referenced, even though he had a long and distinguished career as an actor. It's the, usually the shallowest and the most obvious thing that a character actor does that gets them mentioned in the headlines. And that's something that intermittently pisses me off. I really want people to go, okay, Dean Stockwell, who was in Compulsion, and who was in The Boy With Green Hair, and who was in Long Day's Journey Into Night, that Dean Stockwell. Not the guy who pressed buttons on a prop in Quantum Leap for five years late in his career. But anyway, I like Dean Stockwell in so many things. I think that He's one of the last people, we always say that because time moves on, but he's one of those last people from the classic era of Hollywood 
who worked with a lot of the big names in the 1940s when he was a child. And he had his own distinct style. He didn't really push himself forward in his career the way other people did. He was happy being a jobbing actor. And he did it very well. He could do satire really well. He did Wrong is Right, the really bad Sean Connery movie from the 1980s. Uh, and with a large ensemble cast and he was well in with the satire he worked incredibly well with the ensembles and if you look at him in Wrong is Right where even though he doesn't have a hell of a lot of lines and he's arguing with George Grizzard playing the president and uh, all the other actors around him you can just see that smoothness and that experience come to the fore there I hadn't thought about Dean Stockwell in a while I'll be honest this happens often a character actor you like dies and you think, geez, I haven't seen one of his movies in a while and I really liked him. What happened? What happened is there's so much stuff in front of us that we sometimes move things aside without realising that we're moving things aside. So that's about it for Dean Stockwell. I love a lot of his work. You really should check some of it out if you're into honouring people from the classic era of Hollywood. And I'm going to show you the poster now. The poster is... And I'm not sure if you can see it all. I'll move the camera down a bit. It's A Thousand and One Nights starring Cornell Wilde, Evelyn Keyes, Phil Silvers and Adele Jurgens from 1945. This is an Australian Daybill poster. One of the other things I do is I collect movie posters and they're a little hard to show on screens. But that's one of my ones. It's probably from a 1950s reissue. And I like them, and I've got a few of them. I really should put them into a future video. Let me know if you want me to. And we readjust the camera again. Hey, that went smoothly. So, yeah, just to kind of summarise, I liked Dean Stockwell, and I liked his work. I also like Guy Stockwell's work. But anyway, look after yourself. Stay safe. If you heard a lot of noise in the background during this video, it's raining a lot outside, and I've got cats. But anyway, look after yourself. Stay safe. And by the way, you can also support the channel by going to patreon.com slash paleocinema and at the end of the video you'll see the list of wonderful people who donate through that platform. Next video I'm going to be giving my thoughts on No Time to Die. I saw it yesterday and it was really a profound experience and it ties up the plot threads of the Daniel Craig James Bond movies in a really satisfying way. Watch some good Dean Stockwell movies, watch some bad Dean Stockwell movies, they're even more entertaining. And I'll catch you next time.